My name is Erica Davis, and I'm a human genetics researcher at Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago and Northwestern University. I am delighted to have the opportunity to walk you through some basic knowledge of our current understanding of BBS genes, the proteins they encode, and how changes in these proteins lead to BBS symptoms. But before we dive in, here's a brief reminder of how genes, DNA, and proteins are related and what they do in the cell. The organs of the body are comprised of specialized cells, and these cells contain compartments with specialized jobs. So here are the most relevant are the nucleus and the cilium. So DNA is located in the nucleus and contains genes. And humans have more than 20,000 genes. And you can think of each gene as a blueprint. Through a series of steps called transcription and translation, a protein is made that matches the instructions in a gene. Now following the same analogy, think of the protein as a house. If everything in the blueprint is right, you get a really nice house where everything works correctly. But if there are changes or errors in the gene, then the house you make from that blueprint isn't going to be quite right. So you might get a house where the roof leaks or there's a hole in the floor. So that's what happens with any genetic condition. There's a change in a gene that leads to a protein that isn't built quite the right way. So when we set out to find out what causes BBS, then that isn't just a question of figuring out which genes are causing BBS. It's also figuring out what proteins those genes are blueprints for and what those proteins do in the cell. So it turns out that all of the BBS proteins have something to do with a part of the cell called the cilium. So we'll talk more about that a bit later. But for now, let's look specifically at the genes that cause BBS. So BBS is an inherited condition which means that an affected person has inherited DNA changes from both parents. So more specifically, BBS is an autosomal recessive condition. The BBS genes are located on the autosomes or the 22 numbered chromosomes that are not considered a sex chromosome. So half of these chromosomes are inherited from our mother and the other half from our father. So all of us, whether we have BBS or not, and with very few exceptions, have two copies of all of the BBS genes. The DNA changes in one of these genes cause someone to have BBS. So how is BBS inherited in a family? Well, healthy parents of children with BBS are both carriers of a DNA change in the same BBS gene. So there's a 25% chance that one of their children will inherit the BBS gene with the DNA change that makes its protein not function properly. There is also a 25% chance that the DNA changes will not be inherited or a 50% chance that their children will be healthy carriers of the DNA change. So one of the puzzling things about BBS is that genes or DNA variants are not well correlated with symptoms or severity. So as researchers have tried to explain these differences between people with BBS, we have also learned that at least 25% of people have DNA changes in other BBS genes in addition to their causal BBS gene. So this offers a partial explanation, but research is ongoing to explore this further. You may have heard that there are multiple BBS genes even though dysfunction of any one of them can cause the same genetic condition. So how many BBS genes are there? Over two decades of research have led to the discovery of 25 different BBS genes. The first BBS associated region on the human genome was reported by researchers in 1994. And that's another five BBS associated regions of the genome were identified in the five years after that. It wasn't until the year 2000 when the sixth BBS associated region was under investigation that researchers were able to identify the first actual causal BBS gene, which is BBS6, which is also called MKKS. Now, even then, we still did not know what BBS proteins did within cells to cause symptoms, and the identification of BBS8 in 2003 led to the link between BBS and cilia. Now, in recent years, the discovery of BBS genes has slowed 
since more than 80% of affected people have their causal gene identified. Now, when do we identify the causal gene for someone, some of the remaining 20% of families? It turns out that changes in that gene are extremely rare. So of the 25 known BBS genes, how common or rare is each one among people with BBS? This chart shows the distribution of each gene from a combination of about 365 people with BBS who had genetic testing. The size of each shape represents the contribution of each gene. Now, the first thing you might notice is that not all genes are called BBS and then a number one through 25. Now, this is because a gene might have already been assigned a function or associated to a different human disorder before it was implicated in BBS. So don't worry if you still find this confusing. The most important thing to know is that it, genes have unique names and researchers have systems in place to keep track of them. The most common genes are BBS1 and BBS10. And this is in part because of common DNA variants in each gene. So you might have already had genetic testing and if so, you may have heard of the common M390R DNA variant in BBS1 or the common C91 frame shift variant in BBS10. However, for many people, the BBS DNA variants are unique to each family. After BBS1 or BBS10, there are 10 genes each present in one to 10% of people with BBS. Then there is a group of 13 rare BBS genes shown in the bottom right, that are each present in less than 1% of people with BBS and have been reported in, three, in fewer than three families. Finally, there is still a subset of people who have BBS who have had inconclusive genetic testing. This means that the causal BBS gene has not yet been discovered or it's difficult to identify using our current diagnostic technology. So we focused a lot of attention on BBS genes, but now let's talk about the proteins they encode and what they do in the cilium. So what do the BBS proteins do? There are seven BBS proteins, BBS 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, and 9, along with another protein, BBIP10, that form a complex known as the BB zone, which moves proteins to and from the primary cilium. The proteins that make up the BB zone have to be folded into a very complex shape to do their job. There are three BBS proteins whose job it is to fold other proteins. We call these folding proteins chaperonins because they are like chaperones for other proteins. So you can think of the BB zone as the delivery truck for the cell and maybe the chaperonins as the mechanics that make sure the trucks function properly. The BBS3 protein does something very specific. It helps move the BB zone trucks to the base of the cilium so they can do their job. Now, some of the BBS proteins work at the transition zone between the main part of the cell and the cilium to regulate what, pro what proteins go to the cilium. This is a gatekeeper that controls which delivery trucks can enter. Some BBS proteins participate in intraflagellar transport like the transport system inside the cilium, from the base to the tip. These proteins are arranged like a train, moving cargo along the railway of the cilium. So what happens when any one of the BBS proteins malfunction? This means that other cellular components that are important for function of the cilium did not arrive at the right place at the right time within the cell. This can lead to a buildup of cellular waste or trash that would normally be processed by the part of the cell called the proteasome. Also, the inability to move certain ciliary proteins means that cells cannot receive or transmit signals from their environment. As a consequence, developmental processes do not take place properly and can lead to BBS symptoms such as extra fingers and toes or kidney cysts. Additionally, maintenance processes such as retinal function or metabolism can lead to blindness or weight gain. Now, BBS is a condition caused by changes to the function of cilia. It's not the only condition caused by malfunctioning cilia though. We call all of these disorders together the ciliopathies. 
BBS symptoms can overlap with all of the other ciliopathies, and this is because there are about 1,000 proteins required to build and maintain a cilium, 200 of which have been associated with ciliopathies such as BBS. In addition to BBS, we know of at least 35 different ciliopathies, with more and more being discovered by researchers on a regular basis. Now to illustrate this point, and in addition to the BBS protein complexes, there are others that we know are important for ciliary function. DNA changes leading to malfunction of any one of these protein complexes can lead to various multi-system conditions such as BBS or isolated organ conditions affecting the eyes, kidneys, or skeleton. We don't yet understand why, but ongoing research is aimed at understanding these differences between ciliopathies, what causes them, and how to treat them. So in summary, it's important to understand the genetics and cellular processes responsible for BBS. Not only is it important information for families to know what to expect or to help guide various aspects of care, but it's important for development of therapies. With knowledge about genes, DNA changes, and function of BBS proteins, therapies can be developed based on the type of DNA variant, the protein complex or cellular process, the affected organ system, and it might even benefit other overlapping ciliopathies.